Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft and here in the Calmercial District something has changed. The something is me. <laughs> I've put on my work shirt, I've put on my apron, I have been gardening. Gardening that involves no flowers whatsoever. It is kind of ironic but as my role as the gardener here on the server I'm going around and tidying up little loose ends and changing things and yeah, not much of it involves flowers, but one thing I've been doing is keeping a journal of these activities, and I do them on live streams. All of these are on my second channel. They're numbered, they have the dates, and so here you can see I've actually created a log of all the different things that I have been doing. And in the last episode, I showed you these, but now, as you can see, there is also a lot more. For example, over here at Efo's Ice Store, I've surrounded the outside area with snow. So this little portion of the area now feels like a snowy biome. Next door we have two of Mumbo's stores, Odea and this other one. And both of these were floating without a base below. So I've added in lots of dirt and some stone bricks over on this side. And the same thing was required for Wellsmart, which once again was just uh, a structure floating out here on the ocean. Now it's got stone bricks going all the way down to the bottom. And to stop hostile mobs from spawning up the top, we've lit the surrounding area with lanterns and up the top here you can see it's all covered in carpets. And last but not least, we've also finished building the mountain on the opposite side of the colour concrete shop. And of course there is much more work to be done and I'll be doing this on live streams though, so every now and then I'll bring you up to speed on what's been changing around this beautiful place. But for now, we're going to turn our attention to the gardens project outside of the castle. As you can see, it's been expanded over on this side. We now have some random cactus pop down in this field. Around the corner, dark oak saplings and also sea pickles. It all looks a little bit odd, right? I know it's not very good when it comes to gardening and details, but I kind of want to improve, right? This is just the starting point. I want to figure out how to make some better looking details to go inside of these spots later on. This is just basically a placeholder for now. And as this project expands from this point onwards, we're going to introduce some totally new elements. So I'm going to be lowering the ground over here and building a totally new type of garden suggested by many of you in the comments, which I got loads of feedback in. We'll talk about that later on, but this is going to be a hanging gardens and we're actually going to start work on that in just a moment, but I've got one more thing to show you. And that is this space over here. I've been flattening the desert and making roads and room for Coralis' next suburb houses. So there are two behind us and there's going to be two more in this space. And at some point I'm going to be building a path that comes out the top of this area and then goes down the side of this road. That description was not good enough. It'll look better when I build it, but it's going to help separate this area from this part of the garden where we will be building hanging gardens. So we're going to have like a bunch of pagodas, leaf blocks on top and fruit hanging off of them. First of all though, I got to prepare the area. So that was probably not what you were expecting. All this. <laughs> the way it lined up with the heads in the background there a moment ago just just, just cracked me up. <laughs> yeah, I said I was going to be clearing this area over here, but I just felt like the next thing I wanted to do was build something that I've had a vision for in my head since envisioning the gardens that would go around here. I wanted there to be a pathway that would come out of the main building and then go down alongside the road of Coralis' area and this may get extended a little bit further and there may be some steps that come off and connect it to this area which is what I said I was going to prepare. This is going to have our hanging gardens and I felt like it was good to get this done here so we could actually integrate some of the arches into the design of the garden that's going to take up the space behind us. And for that we need clay to make bricks and I've discovered I actually stored this in two different locations. Because over here we have the clay mini block, but as you'll see, both of them have empty because I've teared through all of my clay supplies for this next part of the build. 
And I swung by the base to get some granite, as I think we're going to need to mix it in here. I've got the shape down, but you always need to have some variation in your block palettes. So look at this. We've got some raised... I don't know what you call these, actually. But they're going to have, like, grass and flowers on the inside. And then we're going to build some pagoda structures over the top. But they line up with the arches here. As you can see, there are some steps, as these are elevated paths through to the next area. And it is down in this space that the majority of our hanging gardens shall be. And so I'm trying to really bring some like height and depth into the build by having these things kind of raise up on the sides. Anyways, we've got the shapes in and now we need to get our paths kind of randomized with different textures. That always elevates the quality of the build. And just up the top here, I've been setting a couple of rules for myself. And I think rules are really good because they allowed your randomization to have a little bit of structure and sometimes that helps tell a story. So down the bottom here in these two layers is where I'm going to put granite and blocks that are not full. And then up the top here I'm actually going to have quite a few of these stairs because it makes it feel like the bricks here have just been chiseled away at over time, you know. And at the top layer of the bricks is where that's most likely to happen. And that is just... A little bit too uniform actually I think I've left like two spaces in between each time that one's got three okay let's go and change this bit another rule that might help a lot is to maybe use a lot of granite the further down we go so I haven't used a lot on the sides but as it goes lower down look there's more and more of it and that might again help just tell a subtle story so a good plan goes a long way the build so far looking pretty good with the block palette ideas that we've had I will say the walls, these bits here, they're going to pop out from a distance. We're going to notice that in a moment. But first of all, check it out. We've got that ugly desert grass texture next to green concrete powder. And that makes it work. It does. I, I, I like it. It's a bit of a contrast, but we've got like a free color thing going on here. And we're going to have to introduce more colors to it in a moment. Now, as we zoom out, remember what I said about the walls. They just ah, they stick out. I might have to change a couple of those but as you can see we've got a lot of structure and shape in place and it's just from over here that it really pops with these stairwells leading down on the sides here again the wall block not quite working out so i mentioned the three colors we're going to introduce leaf blocks to go with the green and then alongside the red of the bricks and the yellow of the sandstone we need a wooden color and i think i'm going to go with oak so i've headed down here to use the log shop off in the distance but then i noticed this Aquatown or Aquitown. In fact, I'm really not sure how that's supposed to be said, but this leads down to an underground subway system. And it is pretty darn cool. <laughs> Let's ride this thing. I doubt there's anything interesting taking place. I just about managed to get in there, didn't I? Here we go. Yeah, just a spooky old tunnel. And uh, the tunnel here sort of converts to white. There's like durite and white concrete. And that is a really nice feature. That's well designed. I love the redstone as well. And now we are in Aquitown. And this place is Scar and B-Dubs' building project. And you know those guys are the master builders here on the server. This diner right here is utterly fantastic. I think they're just selling food over here. You can buy an entire shulker box worth of cake. Over here at the bottom of this fine establishment, there is Wool. That's right, it's got an extra O in it. Why had I never thought of selling wool this season? I mean, I've literally got stupid amounts of this stuff, and we use it all the time. I'm sure other hermits use wool all the time. I can hear sheep. I think I think the sheep are actually inside of this thing. The farm is inside of the shop. That is so cool. And how about this for a technical farm, you know, making it look interesting. Normally we would just use glass, right? But we're using leaf blocks here. You say we, we're talking about B-dubs. I believe he built this shop. Well, it's certainly been a missed business opportunity. I've got to say, I'm starting to get really inspired over here, checking out these builds, thinking I might want to make myself another shop, you know? When was the last time we opened a new shop? And i got to say it, the building here, the level of detail, oh, it's just on another level. This is exactly what I need right now, you know. We're doing a building episode. I'm about to expand the gardens with some new blocks. I, my friends, have just found Sneaky E's new shop. Look at this. It's built out of shulker boxes. Yeah, this fine establishment right here has a very corporate looking lobby. This is luxurious to say the least. And these doors, they lead to nowhere. But going further up this elevator into the shop, there is a room 
selling netherite armor. I thought that there was some on display. Oh, there it is. It's around the corner. Look at that. Oh my goodness me, this must have taken so much time to have gotten. Anyway, I rode the elevator up a little bit higher and found sneaky ease. And look at this, there is wood here for sale. We might be able to pick ourselves up a bargain. And of course, the one type that isn't being sold is oakwood. Anyways, we should spend some diamonds. If you saw the last episode, we spent a lot of time gathering quartz blocks for Corallus, and it's one diamond for two stacks here. So I brought a bunch of that for his next project, and I'm gonna buy some coal blocks. I never build with this, but if I get the opportunity to, it would be nice to have a stockpile of this material. Well, what an inspiring place this is. And those are all the sort of new things happening in the shopping area. I don't think any other new shops have really been popping up. So let's grab our logs and then let's head out of here. Except the log shop, it's all out of stock. The barge, however, is another place to get wood. Over here, the prices are a little cheaper as well. And there's the oak one. Oh, it's empty too. Well, I got to chop down some trees. I, my friends, have created a monstrosity. <laughs> Look at this ginormous tree. And so I had this idea, which was not my idea, it was ZF's idea. I saw it in his episode, and I came over here to try it out myself. And at first it didn't work, but let me show you the concept that he shared. We got some bone mill being activated through this dispenser, and we're going to hold down left and right click. So I'm holding down right, I'm holding down left, and it plants the sapling, and when it grows again, you harvest the tree. It'll also create stripped oak logs, which is kind of like a downside for the amount of regular oak that you get. The funny thing was, I forgot to put the sapling in my offhand, and I was like, Zedaf, how on earth does this work? This doesn't make any sense. The sapling isn't being placed. And then I was like, oh yeah, I've got my totem in my offhand. What am I thinking? So if I pause the process for just a second... Okay, I don't have I don't have one there because I didn't pause it correctly. But as you can see, this gets stripped, right? So now I'm holding down right click and then I'm holding down left. But what I'm noticing in my hot bar is that I'm not getting a lot of oak. I think it's actually stripping tons of it. I thought it just stripped the first log, but I think it might be stripping a lot more than just that. It would also appear that it is actually possible for the next sapling to be placed and then grow into a tree while there are still logs above, so it can be inefficient in that way. So maybe you need a bit more of a timer or something going on on this side. Anyway, the other suspicion I had is that some of the logs might pop upwards through the blocks, and so somewhere up there, there might be a bunch of like logs inside of the tree. If that, yeah, look at that. See, they come up here as well. So this contraption, like, it's a, it's a clever little idea. Look, there's loads of wood at the top. I need to watch ZF's episode again to see how he dealt with these things. And for my own farming needs, I could just do this manually as well. You know, then click down here, let it grow, chop it. That way I'll get, you know, all the oak wood that I need. So using a slower clock over here, I can AFK adequately. And I'm kind of testing what happens when we cap off the top with a block. You can see the logs aren't making their way all the way up to the top here, but they do kind of get out to the side. So I'm going to place a few more blocks around this shape that has sort of solidified after a lot of trees have been grown. That is a massive clump of stone bricks up the top here. And these trees are still growing at a regular pace. So now we're going to keep an eye on where the logs fall out. As you can see, none have spat out the sides yet. One did drop over to the back here. So no logs have popped out the side, but this seems to have slowed down the growth of the trees as well. So let's go ahead and replace all of the stone with logs and then see what happens. And the problem with that idea is pretty self-evident. However, now the logs will actually float up through the blocks to the top. Interesting change in behavior there. And while I was working on this whole thing, I actually went back and watched ZF's episode and he never really finished this idea. I forgot that he kind of left it unfinished, which is probably why it was lingering around in my mind and I was thinking about uh, trying this out myself. Anyway, Zed, if you're watching, there's some great ideas there to finish up this contraption. And it is certainly going to be useful for me today as we're about to use a whole bunch of this oak wood. So getting back to the project, I thought that these two tall flowers would be what we need over here. Aha! The beginning of the hanging gardens, but no, I don't think that's actually what I want to throw into the mix here. But anyway, this is just an appetizer. This is the entrance. So here, when you come through these parts, you now have some hanging leaves over the top. And I've actually spent like a lot of time 
hand placing these, trying to get it feeling as lush and organic as I can for a blocky game. And it's worked out pretty well so far. And from up the top here, you can kind of see how we've got one at each level that goes across from one to the next. That one over there wraps around the corner. And then we've got a few of these stubby types, right, that are low to the ground and come over the edges a little bit. Now I've just got to figure out what exactly goes in the rest of this space here. And then once I've done that, this area is going to be where the true Hanging Gardens is. And in the meantime, I also dropped off that quartz that we got earlier to Corallis. And Cub Fan swung by the base to take some sandstone from our sandstone storage. We have so much of this stuff and I've been telling the other hermits they can come over here and take as much as they like. And as you can see, Cub's taken a couple of double chests worth and he's free to take the rest if he wants. It is now decision making time and I've got two block pallets in front of me. On the right we have the safe bet. This would definitely work for the next part of the build. I want to go in the risky direction. I think it's going to be more interesting to use terracotta with a little bit of orange and brown sprinkled in. And that is the brown mushroom block and where we recently harvested a bunch of these stems I've now got a load of this stuff stocked up. And somewhere in here I think I've got some terracotta somewhere in one of these chests. I wanted to take a risk but look at my hotbar. I did try out these textures but I don't know it just didn't gel that well it felt too flat as soon as you come around the corner here and we arrive with these textures it feels far more fitting it kind of works with the yellow and the red a lot better as well so I wanted to be adventurous but I really do think this is the better block palette here and we're gonna be spicing it up with some other textures as well putting in some grass and dead bushes but that sort of stuff will come later on by the way up the top here I've added in birch leaves at the bottom alongside some red flowers and I felt like that mixed really well but behind me look at this I've been building it up I've been creating like a pathway system and putting in these boxes where our gardens are gonna go so these will be filled up with a similar sort of greenery to what we had over here and then we're gonna build a larger fence post structures with leaves hanging all over them it is gonna take time this has been taking me time as well but it's been really fun this is just such a different project to usual right and over on this side by the way I decided to sort of bring it out to the water Thought that would be a good idea and uh, before anything changes just wanted to have like one more look at it as we swoop over here you see now the garden project is just getting bigger and bigger and we've still got to do this side behind me over here and speaking on that I like the way we've got different sections of the garden and so over here I've actually come in and changed out the block palette you can see we've got a sort of rundown overgrown feel here and using some basalt was a real nice touch. It actually mixes in really well to what's going on around it. So this area definitely going to get an expansion going into this space of the desert. So the big suggestion from the comment section was hanging gardens and a ways into building all of this I decided to look that up on Google image search and it turns out it's actually something slightly different. But I was just thinking hanging as in plants hanging from pagodas and can you see there's a spot of red right here. I've put in some carpets underneath the leaves in the hopes that they would pop out and kind of make it look like some sort of plant or vegetable or fruit is growing up in here right and it doesn't pop through enough. But anyways this is just a start we got two of these pagoda things over here I think I'm going to keep them sort of contained to the boxes and not have them stretch over the dirt paths which again needs some more work but if we just fly up into the sky and look over our shoulder it's actually looking really spectacular so far this is all going in the right direction I am really enjoying this project look at this look at this they're just giving me the stare down why do they stand there like that? It's really menacing, but at the same time, it's kind of easy to deal with. Just got to, okay, just going to back away here. Are they now going off in that? They're going off. They're going off in the other direction. Well, some of them were on their merry way, but they're coming back. Anyway, you can see this is steadily expanding, right? This is probably one of the duller looking areas, but it's quite straightforward. And it allows me to expand it rather large. So down here, we're bringing the aqueduct all the way across. And then around the corner and Corallus was on a moment ago so we were able to communicate with one another a little. This road is actually going to go down underground. It's going to go into that space and I don't know what Corallus has got planned for that bit. 
But over here in this area, this kind of corner space, he's going to build a car park and put some buses for the castle as if it's like a tourist attraction and people are coming to see it, which I think is just spectacular. So the last episode and this one, I have just had fun building and not too much of a plan, just an idea and I kind of roll with it, right? And I've just got lost here for a couple of hours building away and as I zoom out here everything looks really cool however I will say it doesn't complement the castle that much because it's kind of like overgrown and unused right but maybe we could think of this as an out of season garden and you know I tend not to have too strong of a vision I just kind of go with what feels right when I build and so this is what it is and the main thing that's changed since I last recorded is that the aqueduct now comes all the way down over here. If we hop through to the opposite side, it's going to be a while before we do much over here because we're going to wait for Kralis's buses and whatnot. But you can see we've got some water pouring out the sides here and here. We're kind of getting prepared to have this big wide bit where the road goes down underground. And then at the end here, we're just going to have a corner section that ends kind of like the one that we got just over there. And so lots of this build project is still kind of unfinished, but the views are just fantastic from around here. And we'll be adding more builds around the outside, but I do want to get this project finished up. And what I'll be doing is the next few live streams that I'll do, we'll just be hanging out here working on the gardens. And so if you're following me on Twitter or on Twitch itself, you'll be able to find those links in the description box if you need them. Hopefully you'll be able to come and join me. I really do love live streaming. It's a whole other half of what we do here on YouTube, right? It's not just the videos. And uh, yes, I've, I've come over here to let you know what the latest scores are. Also, XB has dropped me off my monthly beacon. So we have ZF score with 51.5 and, and XB's with 49.08. XB there just managing to scrape in front. And I think he had quite a few runs as there's five diamond blocks which are the timed runs deposits so the scores are going up and I know a couple of other hermits are going to come over here and play this so it'll be interesting to see just how many diamonds are going to be up for grab in <laughs> in the long run and look at that over there we can see the aqueduct from all the way over here look at that view that's wonderful and so my friends that brings us to the end of another episode of Hermitcraft hope you've been entertained be sure to leave a like and leave a comment let me know what you thought of what was going on in this episode. It's always good to get your feedback. So that's it from me. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.